everyone, and welcome back to G-Rated Family Gaming Channel. I just want to show you something here, a real, real cool tutorial on how to use two PCs for live streaming. So basically what I usually have when I'm live streaming, I've got a PC, the one that I'm using right now to record and everything, and this is what I have running OBS. And OBS is running the live stream, and it is taking care of all that by itself. But this image in the back, back here, that gets streamed, this is all coming from activity from a totally different computer, a totally different PC. So I'm able to have one PC that is completely dedicated to uh, the graphics and playing Roblox and all of that stuff, and then one that is completely dedicated to the live stream. So we don't have one PC that is trying to run OBS and Roblox at the same time and getting all sorts of lag and kind of killing the priorities. And, you know, so this is something that is helpful for people who might have two PCs and maybe one of them's not super powerful. You don't have a super, super fast processor or anything or core processors. See, I've got i7 core processors and it still will lag on one PC if I'm trying to play Roblox and run OBS and uh, 1080, uh, 30 frame per second stream at the same time. So if I try to do that, uh, it's, it's a little too much on that PC. If you have something new like i9 processors or something crazy like that, you're probably good or you know sometimes people say that playing on uh, Roblox Windows Edition is better or if you have just a higher speed to your processor for what I have because they are not like the most powerful i7s that I have right now uh, but I do actually have two PCs I have a laptop because I like to be able to do some editing in other places but I also have a PC for streaming uh, but what I figured out is that using the Elgato I can actually use my laptop just for gaming during my live streams. I mean, I use it for other things. I disconnect it, use it for other things, and, and use it as a laptop. But also, it's like during my games, I am playing all of the games on this gaming PC, and then the stream is all going through another PC. So this is how everything is hooked up over here in this diagram that I made for you. I also have two monitors. You have to have kind of a, a gaming monitor or a streaming monitor. You could probably make it to where if you have a monitor with three HDMIs, you can move the gaming to one area and then the chat to a different area. But you're really, you're, you're not really using, a, I mean, you, you don't have a lot of real estate in the monitor to use for uh, for gaming. But this really depends. If you've got a huge monitor, then it doesn't really matter. You can make a pretty big gaming window. Uh, but this is how I do it. So I have a PC that I use for streaming. It's got two HDMIs out uh, because it's got a pretty good graphics card. One of those goes to the gaming monitor. Uh, one of them goes to the streaming monitor. This one, when I'm live streaming, this HDMI out, uh, I change the input so I'm actually viewing this when I'm playing the game. Uh, but then my gaming PC has an HDMI out. Uh, the HDMI out goes into the Elgato. The Elgato Game Capture is a really cool unit that's basically the, the, the secret sauce to making all this happen. Basically, there are a couple different options that you can use here. Uh, for Elgato, they've got the HD60 for the capture. That's what I've got. Uh, the 60S, which is a little bit faster. The HD60 Pro, those go up a little in price. And then this one, you can actually plug into the, the PC, and it goes super duper fast. And then the 4K60 Pro, which if you're trying to get 4K quality, 4K resolution, that's how you do that. And then they also have a cam link, which is used to... Uh, basically, you can use DSLR camera to run this stuff. Uh, I'm not sure. I think the camera link might, might actually work for this too. Uh, but what I recommend, I mean, HD60 will work for you. You don't have to spend as much money. So this, unless you've got a 4K setup for your uh, computer and it's outputting like a 4K, you're not going to need anything like this. So I use the HD60 and that's what I plug in here as the Elgato unit. So the PC's plugged into there. That goes out and it goes into one of the inputs for the gaming monitor. And then basically what I do is when I'm setting up my stream, I'm looking at all the stuff. I'm looking at all the activity on the streaming PC. And then I get OBS opened in here. We're going to show you how to set this up in OBS. And it'll be similar in XSplit and other programs for live streaming. So this is the streaming PC. We get everything set up. We get all of our windows open and ready. And then what we do on this PC, the streaming PC, we open up OBS. And in OBS, if you come in here, you've got your scenes, you've got your sources. In order to see what is happening through the Elgato unit, you have to press the add button here to add a source and then you go to video capture device and then in video capture device you will have some options here you click okay you can name it whatever i suggest name it elgato 
Uh, this one right here, we're going to pick the Elgato Game Capture HD. So that is what you're going to pick. I already have it as a source, so it's not going to let me pick it a second time. Uh, so we're going to go into that source. We're going to get rid of this one that we just made as a demonstration. And you can see down here, we've got the Elgato right here. And that highlights this window in the back. Let's see, got Elgato. As you see right here, this all here is coming through the Elgato. And that is from a totally different PC. You can see all this stuff down here from, from this bar. Uh, and then there's, there's this down here, running totally different programs, as you see right there. So you go in that, and most of the default settings are good to go. You may have to come in here and change some of the stuff in the color space and uh, change the resolution. Uh, but usually the device default works for me, and you can take it and make it as big or as small on this window as you have to. Uh, but basically, now that we'll, what we have is exactly what is going on in this diagram. We have this PC that I've got my controller plugged into or whatever. Uh, uh, one one caveat here is that this one does have its own keyboard and mouse and this one has its own keyboard and mouse too so when I'm live streaming I've got a keyboard in the back that is made for that works for this one and then I got a keyboard in the front and another mouse that work for the gaming PC but generally when I'm live streaming I rarely have to do anything to mess with anything uh, as far as the streaming or the gaming PC I'm just hanging out there and I am playing I've got on the streaming monitor I've got where I can see uh, like how many people are watching and the stream health like whether it's green or it's uh, orange or if it's red and then I've got my chat on there so I can read everybody's chat and then I can look up and I can see all the gaming that is going on here and is going through the Elgato unit and it works out great another thing that you might want to know as well is that there is usually a little bit of a delay about one second is what I have to add on to this uh, if you get different Elgato units like if, for instance if you grab like the HD60S or the HD60 Pro, there might might not be any delay. It could be like instantaneous, but for the HD60, there's a little bit of a delay that you have going on there. So basically that one second delay is already built into this Elgato uh, source right here. So we're going to have to try, try to get the other sources. Basically the video capture and anything in the audio needs to get where it catches up to the Elgato. And it is one second is what we found is the actual delay. So if you do have that one second delay like I do, uh, you're probably going to have to come in here into your video capture device and you're probably going to have to uh, put a delay in there, some sort of delay. So usually when I'm running my live stream, uh, what I'm showing is this little Adobe thing, but this would apply to whatever your video capture device and to your audio as well. So you want to go in there and say you want to get that delay to match with the, with the Elgato, try to see and test and see what it is for you. But for me, it's a pretty much one second. So you go and you right click on there, you go to filters, and then you can add a render delay. For the delays, you can only add 500 milliseconds per delay. So I've got two delays. There's a render delay one and a render delay two. Uh, basically, it's half of a second is the most that you can get. I've got it at about 0.9 seconds. I think it's just slightly under one second is the delay. And that's how we add that right there. Okay, so the last thing you want to do is add this little one second render or the 900 milliseconds. You know, try to figure out what the best number is to try to get those to match up. Uh, you can do a little bit of testing. Uh, you can do a, bit, a little uh, record a video and see if the audio is really matching up with your voice and with the gameplay that you have going on at the same time because you want the gameplay and the audio and the video to match up. So the gameplay is going to be a little delayed, so you're going to have to add the delay to your video and your audio. We showed you how to do it in the video and now in the audio you're gonna go to the input right now uh, this is my mic my auxiliary this is my microphone input so you can go here and then click on this and then advanced audio properties then you can show all of the audio input devices uh, this one is the one that we want right here so this is the one it's it's set to 100 for volume uh, the left right panning mix is going uh, what you want here is the sync offset milliseconds so you're gonna to want to add the same amount of delay render uh, as you added to the video source and you want it to match the amount of delay that is going on in the Elgato system so once you do that things will be synced up and they will be working really really great and this is how I managed to get my live streams to go to much higher quality because my my uh, computer was struggling so much like this PC right here was running uh, OBS and it was running the live stream trying to do 1080 
and trying to do uh, the game at the same time, and it usually wouldn't do too well, so I had to kind of drop the bit rate a little bit, and then I had to bring it down to 720, and then sometimes there would still be a little bit of lag, and then I wouldn't have the option to do the like really low stream delay, but now that I've got the PC running and handling all of that stuff, the graphics on the gaming for Roblox for what I do can be turned up and cranked up all the way, and it's not railing the processors on that PC. And then I've got OBS over here, and it's not railing uh, the processor and the graphics card on my streaming PC, and I can make sure I stream uh, with like as low delay as possible. I can do it 1080 frames per second or, or 1080p resolution. And uh, if I want to do 60 frames per second, I usually just do 30 because 60 there still seems to be a little bit of lag, but I'm not sure if that's always on my end or at the end of the person who's watching. So I think 1080p with about 6,000. Uh, bit rate and 30 frames per second seems to work really really good for this setup and the whole stream just looks a lot better and a lot more clear if you guys have any other questions about this setup then just let me know in the question in the comments below and i will try to get to your uh, questions as soon as i can uh, and thank you guys for watching if you're new here i'd love to have you subscribe and hit the notification on the way out and we will see you guys later bye